you are here because you want to increase agility, innovate faster, and deliver new customer features as quickly as possible. But what is stopping you from doing that is what has put success into your, uh, for you in the first place, large monolithic applications that have been built over years. In this session, we are going to look at some of the ways in which you can transition from a monolithic based architecture into a microservices based architecture. Hello everyone, my name is Shardul Inamdar and with me I have Deep Gandhi. We both work at Red Hat and we'll be delivering this session. Firstly, what is a monolithic application? Why does monolithic application exist at all? Let's say I start developing a feature. An urgent requirement comes to me wherein I have to deliver something on a very tight deadline. I follow no coding principles. I do whatever it is possible for me to deliver it as quickly as possible. And because of that, new features get piled up one over the other. And over a period of time, it's a monolith. There are no, there are no new principles followed. It's a baseless architecture. The code base is very difficult to ma manage and it is very hard to test to add new features to it. It is very tightly coupled. It has a lot of technical depth. Maintenance is a very scary thing to do there. It has scalability issues. Well, if I have to deploy something in it, it becomes pretty much difficult. And at the end of it, there is no flexibility. As you can see in this monolith application, everything is in one place. Some people tend to call this legacy, but I don't agree with them. It's not legacy. It is what, is the, what was the best possible at that period of time. So what do we do with this monolith? Do we keep it like this? Or do we change it into a microservices based architecture? Now, what is microservices? Now, microservices is a collection of small isolated services, each of which is independent, scalable, and resilient to failure. Now, what is difference between the both of two? What, increase, what changed here? Firstly, the scope of impact. Each one of them is responsible for one single thing. Each one of them has a single responsibility. We have divided the entire a big load into small loads so that each one of them can manage it on their own. Next, increase dev velocity. So you don't have to work on a big system at once. You can, you can own one part of it, develop it, deliver it faster. And it's scalable at all, scalable as well. You don't have to um, scale the entire application. A part of it, as you get the user request. So every system needs replacement. Now, over here, I'm not only talking about architecture, I'm talking about technology as well. When you start developing applications, you use the technology that is best at that point of time. How many of you guys use Insta over here? Insta users, a couple of them, okay. So Insta was first written in Django, and then they migra migrated into Go. So they also went from a monolithic application into microservices. Twitter, LinkedIn, they migrated from Ruby on Rails to Java. Facebook did that as well. So when we talk about migration, it is not only for architecture, it is also for technology as well. Now, how do we do that? Firstly, migration seems very scary. It might take a lot of time. It can be too expensive as well. And at the top of it, you have to convince your developers to do that as well, because no one wants to migrate. Each one of us wants to just build something on top of it. But you have to do it at some point of time. Let's say, as a developer, I decide to migrate once and for all. I'll put, I'll dedicate some amount of time and migrate everything at once. Why migrate in chunks or uh, have different approaches? But if you, do a big, if you do a big bang rewrite, the only thing that you're guaranteed is a big bang. So what is the solution? How do we migrate from a mi monolith to a microservices architecture? What you do is, you think big, but you start small. So now I hand over to Deep to continue. Hi, everyone. So uh, let's see what the strangler freak pattern says. Uh, so everybody knows the, what is a strangler freak wine is. It basically envelops the host tree, and eventually it replaces the uh, host tree, right? So it starts with very small, but eventually it goes to the place and 
uh, entirely cover the tree. So as we have seen in the monolith application, there is a facade layer which routes the, all the requests to the application. And if we, uh, if we take a use case of any of the enterprise, then it has plenty of uh, services like uh, you, you are seeing here case service, certification service, escalation, customer, G, uh, customer success, GDPR, notification, plenty of them will be there, right? So if you want to uh, transform your monolith to any uh, with, with strangler fit pattern, then there are three main steps. First is the transform, then other is the coexistence, and the third step is the uh, elimination. What we do in the transform is you have to identify the interdependencies between the services. Then you have to replace those services. And you have to identify your, according to your business cases, the features that you can separate out from, your, from the monolith to the microservices. So if you are seeing here, uh, we have escalation and notification services. So we can extract those two services from the monolith application and that could coexist with the mono, uh, with your existing application and the facade layer uh, that will help you out in your uh, coexistence how when whenever you have decided that you are extracting these services of course there will be testing and pre production uh, things will be there and once everything is working fine then you can tweak your uh, application uh, API gateway rules to route those requests to the specific uh, service when, when, when it is production ready. And then you switch over the main uh, switch over from the uh, uh, existing calls to the uh, monolith escalation and notification services to the microservices. So this is the second step. And once you are done with all of the services, uh, like everything is ready and gradually your traffic has been directed to the uh, uh, to every microservices, and you can eventually decommission the monolith service. And uh, voila, I think you will be done with that. But let's talk about the problems with monolith services and how you can eliminate all of this with and, and what you will get with these migrations. So uh, if we talk about the uh, monolith services, uh, there are resource starvation that would happen. And it's difficult. When we say resource starvation, if let's say one service is eating up plenty of resources, then other service might not get. Uh, those resources, then if if any bug is there uh, specific to any of the uh, feature, then e eventually it could uh, blast wall wall application as well, and in in the maintenance as well. When multiple teams are working on on the same thing, if one of the thing gets changed, you will you will have to deploy uh, wall new application in those cases, right? So we can say that it's maintenance uh, headache for each and every team. Cross team collaboration is also difficult in that case. And uh, you, you will have to deal with uh, growing pains of maintenance. So with this migration, uh, you can say we have achieved a larger scalability like uh, whenever there is a re whenever there is a feature request or upgradation request to any of the specific uh, service you can easily do it you can change the technology as well for specific service you can keep other services different on on different technologies as well and like like we have talked about the resource starvation each and every service is having some kind of isolation so that you will have you will not have to deal with those those things early feedback so whenever you are deploying your services you you get the early feedbacks and and you can 
uh, have course uh, course correction immediately whenever is needed so that it wouldn't affect any other service as well risk aversion so we are doing this migration gradually uh, like shardul talk not the big bang way so that uh, you are essentially averaging your risk to pretty minimal and there if there would and and, and in the coexistence as well you you are having uh, a, your api uh, gateway in a way that you will be directing the traffic with having minimal outages and disruptions so that that's that's the one for the risk aversion and security could be also increased because there is no shared database or no shared resource in this case if you talk about the monoliths uh, the services might be interlocked or maybe uh, depending on the one database or maybe depending on the single resource and like we we said uh, uh, the development time and the deployment efforts are pretty not minimal in this case uh, whatever you are seeing currently most of the applications like we we get daily updates for the our iphone applications or android applications is due to this because uh, you can faster deliver all the all the products and services with with uh, plenty of feature requests and all that and uh, cross team orchestration like uh, multiple teams working on the same thing you can identify the owners and define the specific uh, teams for working on the individual services so in that that could happen due to uh, this microservices migration and whatever we have seen in this is is just not the theory because this is actually a use case in the red hat for one of the internal services and this is uh, actually uh, we started with a monolith it was consisting of plenty of features and all that and then uh, it was growing ever after and uh, it was very painful for us to maintain those teams and uh, cross team collaborations and then we we decided to go along with the uh, uh, microservices docker and the cloud based solutions so that we were able to scale it and manage it in a better way now, right now this uh, this migration helped us in a way that we are having almost 30 to 40 microservices currently and it is serving to all of our internal tools so yeah uh, i think we have saved plenty of time <laughs> so yeah any questions comments versioning you mean to say in with microservices yes yeah so uh, in the, in the coexistence sorry sorry uh, can you repeat your question okay sorry uh, so your question is uh, ver versioning with the microservices right in the migration yeah so I think when when you decide to have a coexistence there in the in in monolith also it could uh, that service could exist and you can have a separate microservice as well with that versioning you can define your own uh, let's take an example of a rest path you can define your rest path as v1 or v2 for your uh, new microservice once it is production ready and everything once you decide to uh, give it to the customers you can 
uh, apply the rule in the in your API gateway like v1 slash new service will route to your new service and existence existing will be routed to the uh, monolith application and eventually you can uh, communicate to your customers like you you want to replace or you will be deprecating the existing path and that will be available on the new path. Okay. Anyway, yeah. 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 Uh, so the question is around the time frame it takes from for migration. So when we started, actually we had almost around ten services, and it took it took us around uh, five to six months for us to migrate. When I say migrate, I'm saying in the way that customer communication as well, the entire loop, like not just the migration, uh, communication to the customer and ramp. Uh, Ramping up all the customers to the new microservices. Yeah. Anyone? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so there are multiple ways. Like if you don't want to migrate. Uh, to microservices, like let's say you want to have a serverless architecture, because this is a server, right? You you need to still maintain a server, so you can have those requests going along with the AWS Lambda or something else. There you don't need to manage your server or anything, and you can also have a hybrid approach where you maintain some of the microservices. Uh, not with Strangler fig pattern as well. You can have any other pattern and migrate those, and that could that could also exist as well. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. So your question is related to the rollbacking from once once we, there is a coexistence and you want to roll back to the monolith yes yes so yeah uh, let's say you have extracted some of the services and so there there could be uh, still that applic that service exists uh, that could exist in monolith as well, as well as you have the extracted separate service as well, right? If you want to roll back again, you can uh, remove the uh, extra, ex, uh, extracted service altogether. It, it's just a facade layer which is routing your request to a new service or to the monolith service, right? For monoliths, there is there will be uh, i'm safely assuming that there will be version uh, versioning kept for the monolith applications as well right once you have uh, started migrate migration from monolith to uh, to a separate service that will be a separate version for your monolith right and that will be a new version for your microservices so you can always roll back to your previous version which was working for you uh, in the past. Does that make sense or? <laughs> okay. So in my experience, you have to decide the cutoff times. Because what happens when you support both of the versions? 
it's it's really painful to support those things that's why we we normally support to the latest version do you want to add anything Anything else, guys?